Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a meeting with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at the Safriya Palace. His Majesty and His Royal Highness reviewed a number of local issues aimed at serving the Kingdom's development march. His Majesty praised the development and service projects witnessed by the Kingdom across various sectors to achieve more progress and prosperity for the nation and the citizens. He was reassured about the return of all Bahraini sailors, stressing the importance of ensuring their rights. His Majesty commended the efforts exerted by the government led by His Royal Highness to ensure the release of Bahraini sailors and facilitate their safe return home. His Majesty praised the high turnout of the citizens and residents to take the COVID-19 vaccine, reflecting their awareness and recognition of its importance in achieving the safety of everyone. He commended the humanitarian efforts of the frontline responders and all those in charge of the national immunization campaign. He affirmed that the kingdom has made major strides in limiting the spread of the pandemic, noting that with the cooperation and solidarity of everyone, Bahrain will achieve its desired goals. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Economic Development Board Chairman Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received former British Ambassador to Bahrain Ian Lindsay at the Safriya Palace. His Majesty the King welcomed Ian Lindsay, working the, his appointments as advisor to EDB, wishing him success. His Majesty lauded the long-standing Bahrain-UK relations and the steady growth of cooperation between the two friendly kingdoms across various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the Economic Development Board meeting remotely. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of economic diversification to enhance the sustainability of the national economy and its resilience, which have allowed the Kingdom to meet various challenges. He added that the unprecedented economic stimulus package launched following the directors of His Majesty the King to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 played a crucial role in enhancing recovery efforts for various vital economic sectors. His Royal Highness also indicated that Bahrain has taken careful and balanced steps to manage the impact of COVID-19 on the community and the economy. He said that the economic impact of the pandemic has been reduced by the precautionary measures and the community's awareness while allowing movements and maintaining open borders. His Royal Highness emphasized that the Kingdom will continue to achieve its goals through Team Bahrain and will continue to implement wide-ranging strategies by enabling the private sector to play a greater role in economic growth, create further job opportunities and enhance the Kingdom's economic and investment position both regionally and globally. He noted that Bahraini citizens will continue to remain at the heart of all development plans and praised the ADB's success in attracting direct investment during 2020. EDB Chief Executive Khalid Ibrahim Ahmedan addressed the board members on the impact of the global pandemic on the international economy and presented the latest economic indicators and developments regarding the performance of the Kingdom's national economy and investment position. Ahmedan went on to highlight the EDB's performance in 2020, noting that the EDB exceeded its goals and the continuous growth of accumulated investments over the past 10 years. He also showcased a number of the most prominent local, regional and international investments in the Kingdom in financial services, manufacturing, logistics, retail services, education, healthcare services, real estate, tourism, and ICT. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is the King of Humanity and Loyalty. His Highness added that His Majesty the King has embodied the images of humanitarian stances by supporting his people in the darkest hours and presenting the genuine meaning of a wise leader and adopting noble humanitarian values. His Highness also highlighted that His Majesty the King's telephone call to Bahraini champion Samil Haddad and congratulations on his release and safe return to Bahrain alongside other Bahrainis affirms the high humanitarian values that His Majesty upholds and the great care that Bahrainis enjoy from him. 
He added that His Majesty the King has always been keen on their well-being, on providing them with all forms of decent living and ensuring their security and safety in various circumstances. Since the emergence of the plight of the Bahraini fishermen, everyone has been reassured about the strength of His Majesty the King's humanitarian personality as he was directly affected by the suffering of the Bahraini fishermen. His Highness said that His Majesty the King has accorded special interest to the issue and has directed the competent authorities to stand with the Bahrainis and work on bringing them home. The directives also included providing them with all means of comfort from their release until they reach Bahrain. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised Cordoba CEF's latest victory in Spain's second division football league. He expressed happiness over the victory and said that the team morale is high and the players are following the instructions of the technical team in a professional manner. He said that the club is on the right track in the second division, which is a source of optimism in terms of meeting the objectives of the board of directors. His Highness said that the board is keen on supporting the team and encouraging it toward achieving the objectives of the clubs. He said that those who follow the club's journey in the Spanish second division can note the constant improvements that the club is achieving. His Highness wished the team further success in the coming rounds. The Shura Council held its weekly session remotely, presided over by its chairman Ali Saleh. The council approved a draft law amending some provisions of the municipality's law. The session approved Decree Law 20 of 2020 regarding insurance against unemployment. The Shura Council approved the recommendations of the supplementary report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee regarding the consolidated final account of the state for the fiscal year 2017, the performance report for the implementation of the state general budget for the fiscal year 2017 and the disclosure of transfers from other estimates accounts for ministries and government agencies and the fiscal year 2017. It also approved the recommendations of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee regarding the consolidated final account of the state for the fiscal year 2018 and the report on the implementation of the state general budget for the fiscal year 2018. The students of the Kingdom of Bahrain have achieved distinguished results in the 22nd edition of Her Highness Sheikh Latifa bint Muhammad Al Maktoum Child Creativity Competition, winning six first places and first and third places in the Arabic Calligraphy Competition, organized by the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, and first three places in the Hackathon Innovation Competition in the Middle East and North Africa. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naim, congratulated and hailed these educational achievements, praising the distinguished results that affirmed the educational process has reached a higher and honorable level as a result of the efforts made to improve the performance of schools at all levels. More than 60 students participated from the Kingdom schools in various fields of the competition that was held remotely. Housing Minister Basim Al Hamar announced that the ministry had begun the distributing procedures of Al-Bahir housing project units to the beneficiaries. This came as an implementation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's orders to distribute 5,000 housing units. The minister pointed out that the Al-Bahir housing project is one of the most prominent housing projects that the ministry is implementing in the Southern Governorate and that it is one of the main programs of His Majesty's Royal Decree to build 40,000 housing units with the honorable support headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He assured the coordination between the Housing Services Department and those involved in the project management to follow up the distributing procedures and facilitate them, stressing the keenness to provide housing services to the beneficiaries as quickly as possible and with the highest quality standards. 
The President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, received the Arab Parliament Speaker, Adel Assoumi, in the presence of Egyptian Parliament Speaker, Dr. Hanafi Jabali, and the Foreign Minister, Samah Shukri. He stressed the importance of protecting Arab security and taking a unified stance in tackling all issues. President al-Sisi reiterated Egypt's support to the Arab Parliament, stressing its pivotal role in maintaining stability and promoting the vital interests of the Arab nation. Arab Parliament Speaker praised Egypt's pivotal role in bolstering pan-Arab joint action, praising its unprecedented development strides led by President Sisi. He praised President Sisi's role in protecting pan-Arab security and supporting Arab issues and confronting foreign interference in Libya. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,869 with 313 recoveries, 248 registered new cases and two deaths. 114 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 117 are contacts of active cases and 17 are travel related. The deceased were an 81-year-old female citizen and a 69-year-old male citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.